spirits to receive all that you have for us on tonight. God, we need you right now. Oh, Lord, bless us. Come, Holy Spirit. It is in the name of Jesus. In the powerful, perfect name of Jesus. In the glorious, wonderful name of Jesus. In the name of the one who sits high and looks low. In the name of the one who is our Savior and our Redeemer. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. We pray. Amen and amen. Oh, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, my brothers and sisters. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name. I don't think y'all got it yet. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name. Has God done anything for you today? Let us exalt his name. Can we give God some glory today? Can we give God some praise? Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, I am thankful today for this opportunity to stand before you yeah. to preach a word from the Lord. Amen. Amen. I want to thank the shepherd of this house, Bishop Walter Jones, Jr. Let's give God some praise for the bishop. <laughs> and course for his right hand, a man who is here, Bishop Jones. God bless you. We thank God for your presence. Give God some praise for Bishop Jones as well. Or oh, Bishop Ross, excuse me. Bishop Ross. I, I, I messed his name up because he messed up Brown Memorial. He said A in me. So I, I'm, amen. I don't mind that he said amen, hey, but, but I am seeing me, amen. And, and I have some see me folks here with me, amen. See me Christians, amen. Methodist Episcopal Church. So I thank God for all of you, amen. I, I, I see some preachers here. Dr. Henry, God bless you, my friend. Thank God for your presence today. He is a, a, a mighty man of God in the see me church. Thank you, his wife and family. We, we give God praise for you. Um, for the Brown Memorial family, I thank you for coming and sharing with us on tonight. Uh, you didn't have to be here, amen, but you are here, and we thank God for it. And then to this annual conference, Brown, can we give them a round of applause, amen, 117 years, amen. We understand, amen, we understand something about annual conferences. We just hosted our annual conference just two weeks ago at Brown Memorial, had 100 and something plus folks, 200 folks coming in town having to host these brothers and sisters for almost an entire week. They eat a lot of food, y'all. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but the good news is they ate the word. Amen. They feasted upon the word. Amen. And then finally, amen, let me say a word to my lovely wife. Amen. My bride for 20, almost 24 years now. I've known her since we were 12 years old. 12 years after meeting her, she married me. We have two beautiful children. Oh, she does something to my heart, y'all. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Shonda. God bless you. Now, brothers and sisters, I know we came here for a word tonight. Amen. And the word you shall receive. Amen. And so I won't hold you long. Amen. Amen. My, my congregation knows I don't take long to do what God has called me to do. Amen. So you have to listen quick. Amen. If you think I'm talking too fast, you're listening too slow. Amen. But our word tonight comes from the book of Romans, the eighth chapter, verses 28 through 30. And on your programs, if you have them, it's listed there from the New King James translation of the Greek text. And it reads thusly, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be 
conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. But again, from part of verse 29, it reads from the New Revised Standard Translation, for those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. And so for just a few moments with your prayers, I want to preach from the title, Do You See the Family Resemblance? Amen? Do you see the family resemblance? resemblance? Brothers and sisters, we are all born into a human family. We all have a father and a mother, and for better or for worse, we acquired certain traits and characteristics from them all. There are outward characteristics that we may have, as well as similarities in temperament and even disposition. Oh, I know you heard somebody say, you act just like your father. Or oh, you heard somebody say, your attitude is just like that of your mother's. If you look at my facial features tonight, brothers and sisters, the size of my nose and the curvature of my cheeks when I smile, uh, uh, even my stature. And if you know anything about my family, you know that someone would say that Reggie Barnes looks just like that, that, that classic Barnes man. He, he has a chiseled face. He, he's mighty. It's because I'm a part of the family. And my brothers and sisters, if you have some brothers and sisters, uh, you, you will hear people, people might say that even you have some characteristics of brothers and sisters. And so some might even say you have a family resemblance. <clears throat> but all my brothers and sisters tonight, but when it comes to you as a Christian, when it comes to us being a part of God's greater family, can people say and will they say that they see a family resemblance? Oh, you, you see, brothers and sisters, some of us, we don't look like we ought to look. Some of us don't have the right kind of attitudes to be a part of God's great family. Ah, uh, but you see here in Romans 8 and 29, Paul, writing under the inspiration and the influential power of the Holy Spirit, says and tells us, for those whom God foreknew, he also predestined to become conformed to the image of his Son, and so that he... Christ would be the firstborn among many brethren. And my question tonight, church, is, is there a family resemblance? Right. Oh, I understand, my brothers and sisters, and I, and I hope we are brothers and sisters tonight, aren't we? Uh, we will understand that, that, that God's purpose in creation, that God's purpose in redemption is to have a family of children conformed to the image of his son. Yes, yes, to be sure, church, God's ultimate purpose in our creation was that we would finally be conformed to the image of Christ Jesus. Jesus was the firstborn among many children, and we are to be just like him. Well, then the question then is how are we, as followers of Christ Jesus, how are we being conformed to the image of Christ? Well, for you see, church, in Genesis 1 and 26, we learn that from the very beginning, God said, let us make humankind in our own image, according to our likeness. Yeah, 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 yes, yes, church, church, God created us in his own image. And guess what? All of humanity was good. But then after the fall, somebody say after the fall. Then after the fall, church, after Abraham failed, we became considerably less than that image. And we began to produce children in that fallen image. It's sort of like having a Snapchat. Y'all have seen Snapchat on your phones, that Snapchat filter. It, it, you can take a picture, and, and it can be a beautiful picture of you. It can look real good on that picture, but then you can put it through the filter and begin to manipulate the image. You can twist it and begin to bend it. You can contort it to the point that you become distorted from your real appearance. You're unclear as to who you are. Or you become imprecise as to your original image. Oh, some people laugh at those images, but the fact of the matter is, it's not how God made you. It's not the image God planned, and suddenly there is no longer a family resemblance. Well, for my older folks who don't know anything about Snapchat and those filters, have you ever been to the, 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 mirrors, the mirror house, house of mirrors? Sometimes those mirrors can be concave and convex, and they can make you look like you, who you're really not. They can make you look really tall, uh, like 
Bishop Ross, or they can make you look short and pretty like me, Pastor Barnes, but, but, but it can contort you. It can make you look like somebody that you're not supposed to be. And all I'm saying is that because of the fall, we're not who we're supposed to be. We don't look like the image we're supposed to be. And church, understand that when you and I are not in our original form, when you and I have been distorted, you lose your luster, you lose your shine, you lose your sheen, you lose who God made you to be. And all I'm saying, church, is there a family resemblance? Oh. So many of us, church, we have been constructed so much so that if we can barely are recognizable anymore as to who we are. And so after the fall, our natural disposition is, the only thing that we can do is really oppose the will of God. And so, church, if you read the book of Romans, what you will gather from Paul's writing is that there that all of us, not just some of us, but all of us have a sinful family resemblance to Adam as our earthly father. You see, Adam's choice to follow Satan's advice instead of God's commandments corrupted his image. So the children that Adam reproduced all came into the world with his own sinful image. And brothers and sisters, tonight, we were born into that same distorted image. And some of us seem to want to stay in that image, or at the very least, create our own image, instead of being in the image of God who tried and who did, rather, create us. Yes, oh, you see, church, before we gave our lives to Christ Jesus, we were living under the pressure to conform to the world's standards. And because those whom conform to the world's standards, they're rewarded, aren't they, church? They're rewarded by being accepted and liked, rewarded by being praised and made famous or popular. They're given financial rewards, jobs and promotion, even favors. But those who don't conform to the world, we seem to be punished, we're rejected and ridiculed, verbally attacked and slandered, defamed and persecuted. Well, guess what, church? I know a man who was also rejected. I know a man who was ridiculed, verbally attacked and slandered, defamed and persecuted. Oh, but the word of God says in Romans 12 and 2, it says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is the good and acceptable and perfect will. Oh, the truth is, church, when you were conformed to the world, you were destined to live in the slums of sin, a world of despair and distortions, a world of desperation and defeat, doing whatever felt good, going after whatever looked good, but not really feeling good. You see, before Salvation Church, we did as we wanted for our own pleasure, but we were church, oh, I love this, we were destined to a life where happiness was only secured by the stuff we had, where peace was based on our bank accounts, where love was based on sexual gratification, and security came from alcohol and drugs. But this is the distorted image of who you were and not who God made you to be. And because of that, church, many of us don't have that God family resemblance anymore. Oh, how do I know when we've lost that God family resemblance, church? You see, when you begin to make excuses for your sins, you lost that family uh, resemblance. When you justify not doing God's will, you've lost that family resemblance. Uh, when you avoid God and God's command upon your life, you've lost the family resemblance. When you talk a good talk, but you walk a wobbly walk, you lost the family resemblance. When you speak of how good God has been, but you complain about your life each and every day, you've lost the family resemblance. When you thank God for blessing us, but we won't bless somebody else. Guess what? You've lost that family resemblance. When you can say we stand on the promises of God, but yet and still we're shaking when every time the wind begins to blow. Church, we've lost that family resemblance. When we talk about how God has set us free, but we're still oppressing women, we're still oppressing the poor. Guess what? You've lost the family resemblance. Ah, uh, understand, church. And it's easy for us to lose the family resemblance when we're not doing what God has called us to do. It's easy to lose the family resemblance when we're not being about God's business of saving souls. It's easy to lose the family resemblance when we're all about the world and not about God. Church, and my question tonight is, is there still a family resemblance? Ah, 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 but there is some good news for us tonight. For those who have lost the family resemblance. Well, well. For Jesus Christ comes into our world in the exact image of God. Right. 
You see, Hebrews 1 and 3 says, he is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his nature. You see, Jesus comes to us in the flesh as the exact image of God because he was and he is God. And that's good news for us tonight, church. For you see, through Jesus, we're given the opportunity to once again have the family resemblance. You see, John 3 and 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Or Romans 10 and 8 says that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. You see, church, that's your opportunity for family resemblance. Well, well then, well, Paul makes it plain in Romans 8 and 28. He says, we know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined. Somebody say predestined. Predestined, predestined church to be conformed to the image of his son in order that he might be the firstborn within a larger family. You see, church, Paul, in our text tonight, uses the word predestined. He's not introducing this word to confuse you. He doesn't intend to explain the doctrine of predestination or address the issues that arise when the word is mentioned. But rather, he uses this word, my brothers and sisters, to bring you comfort, to bring comfort to those who don't have that family resemblance anymore. Well, Y'all don't believe me, do you, church? Uh, you see, something, uh, you see, this is, this is what predestination is. It means it's fixed. Uh, what Paul is saying is that if you love God, you can count on a promise that is absolutely fixed, uh, that it will not change. It's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Uh, oh, so what is it that, that is predestined? The scriptures tell us those whom love him. Do y'all love him tonight, church? Do you really love him tonight? Uh, you see, those who love him will be conformed to the image of his son. Oh, you will be conformed, church. You'll be made like him. You see, the ideal is from the Greek word morphos, uh, from which we get the English word metamorphosis. You see, Paul is saying that God promises that through us, and that in us, that he will have a, that we'll all have a metamorphosis. He promises to change our very inner existence. He promises to change our very inner being into the very essence and very being of Jesus Christ. You see, we know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son in order that he might be the firstborn within a larger family. You see, church, if you love God, all things will work together that means that everything that happens in your life will be used to mold you. That everything that happens in your life will be used to sculpt you. That everything that happens in your life will be used to polish you, to begin to shape you, and to conform you into the image of Jesus Christ. You see, church, God is taking all of our life's experiences. God is taking all of life's circumstances. God is taking all of life's situations and working them all together uh, for that good. Oh, what is good, you ask, church? The good is our transformation. The good is our metamorphosis into the image of Christ Jesus. You see, God is making you like his son, Jesus. He's giving you back everything the devil stole from you. He's giving you back that family resemblance. He will give you, church, Christ's incredible compassion. He'll give you Christ's incredible courage. He'll give you Christ's comfort. He'll give you Christ's beauty. He'll give you Christ's love. He'll give you Christ's honor. He'll give you Christ's realness. He'll give you Christ's excellence. He'll give you Christ's riches. He'll give you Christ's glory. God is working everything. Somebody say everything. He's working everything together. The magnificent God that you and us have, he's working it all together, church. And the text says it is predestined. It means, church, it's guaranteed. Now, the minute you become a Christian, the minute you show enough, give your life to Jesus Christ, you, you, get, you get into this thing called his family. You have an intimacy with God like no other. You have an unconditional relationship with your Savior. You become beautifully and spiritually and rich in him. The more you live for him, the more Christ you look like. The more you act like him, the more you take on his features. You become part of God's great family. You become that image of Christ Jesus. Oh, understand, church, Paul is not promising you that things will be better. 
He's not promising better situations or better life circumstances. He is, though, promising you a better life, a, a far better life, a life filled with overflowing joy, a life filled with God's glory, a life filled that will be conformed to Christ Jesus, that you will be in the image of God, his son. Oh, my beloved brothers and sisters, you have an eternal life, a life that never ends. You have a life that's found only in Christ Jesus. You see, church, Jesus lived a perfect life and died a perfect sacrificial death for our sins. And he rose again early one Sunday morning with all power in his hand that you and I could be made right by God and live by faith in him. That you and I once again can have a new spiritual body by faith. And now, church, that we've been conformed to his image. Uh, Y'all understand that now that you've been conformed to his image, you're part of God's great family. Uh, what, what did you catch the progression, church? You see, we were made in God's image. We fell in sin and acquired Adam's sinful image, which according to Adam's decision and his choice. But now God chooses to work his salvation on you. God chooses to work his redemption in you, to those who he foreknew and predestined in order they might once again be in his perfect image, conform to Christ's image, Oh, my brothers and sisters, what a marvelous and marvel of God's amazing grace that I, a wretched sinner like me, can be conformed in his image, that I, who fail time and time again, can be part of God's family resemblance. Aren't you glad tonight, church, that because of Jesus Christ, that God has conformed you to God's great son's image. Aren't you glad tonight that you can have that family resemblance, that right now, church, you are part of God's great family, that right now, church, you can stand tall and hold your head up and say, yes, I am part of God's great family. I have the family resemblance. I have it in my walk. I have it in my talk. I have it the way I treat my wife. I have it with my kids. I have it in my church. Is there a family resemblance? Is there a family resemblance? Do you look like the image? Well, church, if you don't, now is the time to get your life right. Now is the time to know that man named Jesus. Do you know him, church? Do you know him, church? Well, guess what? I got to know him. One Wednesday night, 12 years old, I found out who my Jesus was. And right then, church, I began to have the family resemblance. Brothers and sisters, do you still resemble? God for the message and the messenger. I want to pose a question to you. Do you look like your daddy? Or do you look like your elder brother Jesus? Because the text says conform to his son. So that's your elder brother Jesus. Do you look like him? Do you walk like